Hello everybody, Fook here, welcome to my channel update for October 2017, the spooky edition because I'm not wearing any form of mask. And we're going to go over the usual here to start with, the patron shoutouts for those who supported the channel last month. While I show you some f fan art slash just art I was sent because, for instance, someone sent me a picture that their little baby drew of Isaac because they watch with them as I play Isaac. So stuff like that. Then we'll go over what's new with YouTube, what's new with Twitch and what will be coming to the channel, pardon me, in November. Also, I just wanted to briefly show off something I forgot I ordered a while back. This is the official Hollow Knight plushie of the actual knight himself. I haven't opened it because it's in a Hollow Knight themed bag, so I haven't decided whether I want to actually lose the bag. But that's what it looks like. Not to be confused with the one that's there, which was made for me by a viewer and is made of different stuff. That's made of um, wool, I guess, and this is made of whatever it is that plushies are normally made of. Anyway, let's start, as we mean to go on, by getting on with it. Uh, I do have a lot of names to read out, and that's due to the generosity of people going to Patreon, so thank you for that, because things have been slowing down on YouTube and Twitch. I imagine that's partly because of exam season and whatnot, but I imagine that's not just the reason. So if you have become a patron, thank you very much. It does mean I have a lot of names to read out, though. So what I thought is, if I don't have a lot of fan art, what I might do closer to the time where I'm going to be doing next month's channel update is I'll solicit on Twitter for you to send me pictures of your pets, and I will put up pictures of your pets. Now, obviously, if you want it to be recognised as yours, you're going to have to use paint or something to write on it that this is so-and-so, insert pet name here, and it, this is the pet owner, if you want to have your name accredited to whatever picture. So look out for that towards the end of November. Anyway, thank you to Zappawork, Stormbolter83, Garlock Thornbolt, Nathan Fraser, Flying Ricer, Jeannie McElroy, Taya Blake, Leon, Inbred Womble, Azoi Origin, Nor Nathan Norton, Charlie Abrams, Steve Charchan, Cuppy, Rebecca Trexler, Dashumi, Rash, Chemically Rad, Brad84CNC, Stefan Sergidson, Michael Comer, Solace Corbis, Alana Kitty, Rydog1391, Platypus Custard, Josh Cross, Robert Green, and Brian Hsu, Jarek, Andrew Northrop, Matsumuni, Julia Wasberg, Dan PD, Ian Dickinson, A Valiant Effort, Kevin Mazer, Kaiho Dugan, Julia Chang, Dudak, Brian Halligan, or Halligan, Timothy Saban, Colton Pierce, Jared Tabor, Thaxton, Drizzen, Megan Perry, The Bearded Panda 24, and Marple Carey, Shot C322, I think. Ryan Hafner, Richard Davison, Loista, Jason Steinberg, Seb Muppis, Richard Bearwell, Orca Queen, Michelle Lammers, Lamers, Erox, Colin Lynch, uh, Michael Bigler, Ginger C, Terrell Smith, Reaper, Rachel Weber, Yifan Mai, James Woody Packard III, Derek Williams, Igukski, Andy Arminio, that one guy with the face, Iguion, Charles Baker, and The Newbie. Thank you very much for that. I'm not going to delete those names right now in case anything goes wrong with this audio. And now I'm going to go to a different TXD because I have a list of things to talk about. So we've done that part. This part I only just wrote in before recording this. Internet is still playing up and I have a feeling it's never going to be perfect. It's just there's something wrong with this house. No matter how many technicians I get here, they can't solve the problem. They can fix it for about two, three weeks. But my internet is back to randomly disconnecting now and when it usually does that it comes back and the, the the download is fine but the upload is turned to pish and the only way for me to fix it that i've found is to sit and restart the router over and over until it gives me good upload speed and i really do not want to have to go through the stress of contacting bt again to contact india again to speak to someone who's reading from a script to me that doesn't speak english very well and will not listen to any of the points i'm making and also will just try very hard to make sure I can't get any compensation by making me close complaints early and all the bullshit they've done before. So we'll reiterate, don't go with BT, go with anybody else. They are absolutely terrible. Sadly, because I'm so rural, I have no options. I did contact someone else in the UK who puts down their own lines. They are not in this area yet and they're not likely to be for a while. If it comes to it, I'll have to contact them, obviously, if it gets to the point where it breaks entirely and restarting it doesn't help, which will mean waiting for an engineer to come out again, waiting for them to do the same stupid test they always do and say, oh, there's no fault, and then they'll reset the line and it'll be working for two weeks and then I'll have to contact them again. It's a waste of everybody's time, unfortunately, but 
what can I do? It's nothing. In. The the annoying thing is I actually got an email from BT. Actually, I might still have it. Let me let me read it to you. This is a generic email because my mother got it as well. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I definitely kept it. I'm almost certain I kept it. BT Broadband. Your free bod broadband boost is here. So I pressed on it and it says, a gift from us to you. We've got a little surprise just for you, a free boost. There's no need to do anything and no charges. Simply open up your boost below to find out what you've got. So then I pressed, oh, okay, what's this? I'll press on this and discover. And then it's basically a generic page. So again, it doesn't matter where you press on it from. It takes you to the same landing page. And it says, just to say thanks, we're giving you a boost. We've doubled your cloud storage and also improved your speed. Although, now that is interesting. <laughs> That is very interesting. Last time I pressed on this link, it said we've doubled your cloud boost and improved your speed. And we're, we're giving you a new maximum if you're on Infinity 1 instead of Infinity 2. I thought I was on Infinity 2. Apparently I was on Infinity 1. And now Infinity 1 is going up to 78 download maximum speed. I pressed on the link now and it's changed. So it just says BT Cloud Storage. It doesn't say the other part and it definitely did. BT are a bunch of twats. They, they are con artists to the highest degree. And that is terrible. Now, I did think the, error, the email was an error to start with because, as I, as I said, I thought it was on Infinity 2 to start with. But I'm, I'm so glad I opted just to... Pardon me. I just spat back a mistake because of anger. I'm glad I just randomly decided to go click on that link again to read you exactly what it said because, hey, it turns out they've changed it now, so they, there's no proof of the claims they made earlier. Charlatans, they are the worst. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, moving on. In November, I plan to start doing a test run of Warhammer 40,000 content on the channel. The foldable 6x4 table I'm waiting on, which is what you need to do a standard sized game of 40K. It's shipping to me from Germany around about the 10th of November. I double checked with the person I bought it from. It's a, well, it's a, not a person, it's a company in Germany who makes them. Pardon me, this is what I get for chugging fizzy juice before recording a vlog. It should get uh, shipped on the 10th of November or just before, depending on when their stock is finished and ready to go. I imagine it won't take longer than a week to get to me. I'm in the process of painting up as many of the, the Dark Imperium starter set models as I can to have them done by them. I'm not going to have them all done by any stretch. going to have as many done as I can, though, and... The first battle report I'll test is probably just putting Dark Imperium models against each other, so the, the two sides that came in that starter set for 8th edition. Going to trial run it, so it'll probably appear around the middle of November, unless something delays the table, because really the table is all I'm waiting for. In the meantime, painting models, painting up some scenery to make the table look nice. Going to try really hard. I previewed what the thumbnails will roughly look like, although don't take the picture as set. That's with an old camera that's nowhere near as good as the one I have now. Plus, it's also not a good angle, but the, the banner headline bit I did, plus the, the bit in the middle for the two armies fighting each other and the points, that'll probably all stay. I'm kind of happy with the banner I did. I did Mafia Frog going like daka 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 and then shooting across at my avatar who's getting two plus saves because he has an invo and is probably cheating. That's on Twitter if you want to see it. So, November, 40k content will be trialling. On Patreon, I... Did a post that's available to everybody, so you don't need to be a patron to view it, but that's the easiest place for me to put something. I listed all my available models that are usable in 8th edition, and by that I don't mean personal opinion, I just mean like certain Chaos models can't be used by Death Guard anymore. Uh, so they're there, and if you are familiar with 40k, you can go to that list and you can think up a list for me to use in a match. Now, I've still got the first couple planned, but in general, I thought that might be a nice way of varying up the armies getting used if I go by other people even though it's still just going to be me playing both sides because I don't know anyone nearby who plays 40k. So I'm still going to be trying that. If you aren't familiar with 40k, hopefully it will still be watchable. I sincerely hope that. The base rules for 40k are available to read for free, and I think I linked them in the same post on Patreon that listed all my models. It's The base rules are simple. All that's missing from that is the individual army rules, and you don't need to really care about that stuff unless you're playing. So... I sincerely hope it's watchable. It'll be very different to any other content I've done on this channel. I'm hoping it'll be a hit. It might not be. We'll trial it in November and see. So next on my talking points is that the PO Box address is staying exactly the same. I wanted to switch to a better, more reliable company that wasn't Royal Mail. 
that would also allow people to send sign for stuff. Now, unfortunately, the only one I knew of, the one I, I bookmarked, the one that I thought was really good because it was cheaper and they'd take sign for stuff and they could send it to you directly from their place. I went in to discuss it with them, I took away some leaflets and I, I don't remember what stream it was during or what we were playing at the time, but I read out to the stream the list of hidden costs. So it starts out like, oh wow, this is really cost effective, this is great. And then you get to the add-ons. Whether you want it to be, whether you want your business name to be on the PO box address, that costs extra. Whether you want them to send it to you, that's got a base cost plus the cost of postage. Whether you want it to be available at all times. It was just tack on, tack on, tack on, tack on to the point where it was twice as expensive as Royal Mail. So even though Royal Mail is by no means good, unfortunately, with their PO box service, I'm going to have to stick with them because it's just not cost effective to go for something else. I don't get enough sent to the PO box. I don't think I have a large enough viewership to warrant like spending 300 plus pounds on half a year to eight months of a PO box. So we're sticking with the normal one. It still means you can't send sign for stuff. It will not get to me. You have to make sure it's not signed for. But the address that I've been saying on you know Twitter twice a month and in video descriptions and whatnot and on the about section on my YouTube page, it's still that address and will remain that address for at least six more months. So that's that covered. The The next thing I have to remind everyone about is that now if you're in the US and you go to Amazon, you can actually find my shirts available over there. The ones that were limited runs as shirts and hoodies on Teespring last year are now available on Amazon to anybody in the US. You can just go to Amazon and search for Flix Gaming stuff and you'll find them. Or, if you want, you can use one of the Twitch extensions I use below my Twitch channel, and one of them is actually tied into Amazon. And if you go via that link, I get monetarily compensated. If you buy my shirt anyway, I get monetarily compensated, but I've also listed there, like, the webcam I'm using right now, the microphone, the keyboard and mouse, etc, etc. So if you're ever curious what gear I'm using outside of the actual PC, or and monitors, it's listed in that Twitch extension as well. And if you were to click through from there, I get compensated even if it's not something I, I made. So that's something I wanted to mention. If you're interested, there is also a Twitch extension I have there now which lists like who gave the most bits, weekly, monthly, daily, etc. And then there's also one which is actually just kind of like a, a clicker game called Stream Heroes that people will like playing in short bursts and apparently there's raids you can do and stuff. So if I'm not playing something that interesting to you, if you just want to listen to me, you can play a clicker game while watching, if you want. You don't have to, obviously. So that is something. Uh, the Inside Baseball episode of Gungeon that went live a few days ago, Inside Baseball 11, that is the one where I went through feedback based on the user survey or viewer survey I gave to people last month. I put off getting through it because I didn't want to do it while I was suffering from that concussion or anything like that. So I went through it. I went through my bullet points of stuff I'm going to try and improve and change on the channel. That will hopefully happen going forward. If you're curious at all what my findings were, Inside Baseball number 11, it went live on... It went live on the 26th of October. So it's there if you want to watch it. It's the most Inside baseball one I've done because it's purely about my channel, but I thought some of you might be interested. Uh, next, special mention to A Hat in Time, which I only did on YouTube side as big full VODs of each play session I had of it. Surprise! hit for me for a game I've enjoyed this year. It's a thoroughly enjoyable, very cute, awesome soundtrack, 3D platformer akin to Mario 64, Mario Sunshine. Uh, people said it was like Sly Cooper and uh, Banjo-Kazooie. It's really, really good. I, I would actually encourage, like, much like Hollow Knight, I'd actually encourage you not to watch me playing it and play it for yourself. Also, I just got a Twitter mention. Also mentioning that Jackbox Party Pack 4 is out, I did upload the first VOD of us trying out all the new games to YouTube. As I've said in that Inside Baseball episode of Gungeon, not putting across party games and golf really from Twitch, uh, from Twitch rather, because they are they're not as viewable when it's not live and it doesn't do well on YouTube. So I, I put it over the first one just to kind of be like, hey, there's a new Jackbox. Here it is. Here's the games in it. Here's us trying it for the first time. Basically, Monster Seeking Monster is the best game ever invented. The rest of the pack is okay, but that one in particular, especially because the audience can join as a, a hive mind player and gets to like try and win, and they have, although not by themselves, but one match in particular I didn't make it over to YouTube, three people won, and one of them was the audience. But it's a really interesting concept for a game. I was sad when Jackbox 4 didn't have Murder Party 2, but Monster Seeking Monster is a very fitting replacement. 
And if you still want trivia, there is still like fibbage and stuff for that kind of atmosphere. Although I do hope they bring back some new iteration of Murder Party if they go forward with Jackbox 5. Uh, on the stream side, since we're talking about that already, Saturday morning streams are still happening, and until such time as we finish it, it's me and Valinar doing three more hours of Divinity Original Sin 2 together. I, I have no idea how far through the game we are. Other new stuff, South Park, I'm playing through the Fractured Butthole for the stream side. We actually just played it for four hours last night. I was only meant to do it for two, but I, I, I asked the chat if they just wanted me to stick with playing it, and they're enjoying it, so I did. That's not coming across to YouTube because of some of the content in the game, but if you want to catch South Park, me playing it through, it's on Twitch. My I haven't made them into highlights, but the the past broadcasts of my streams, I think they last for at least two weeks. I think actually it might be a month because I'm a partner. So you can see them on there. I always write in the title that it's South Park plus whatever or just South Park. So you can find them there if you want to see me play through the Fractured Butthole. Also on Twitch side, I've started playing Destiny 2 because I wanted to play a brainless, dumb, sure. And it's certainly that. I'm uploading that to YouTube just as the full VODs as well because I don't think any of my audience cares about me playing Destiny 2 per se. So it is there as full VODs if you are interested, but it's kind of tucked away to one side. As for the YouTube side, new YouTube content, I have been struggling to think of anything, especially in November. I just, I look at the list of stuff that's coming and all I see is Monster Hunter World in January. Monster Hunter World in January. Between here and now, there's nothing I'm particularly interested in. Maybe the new Wolves in Time, I still haven't fully decided what I'm going to do about that one. But I was really struggling for finding stuff I could record in my own time now that XCOM is finished. So I've been recording a lot of Isaac. I sincerely hope that the Gungeon update drops soon because then that means I'll be recording some off-stream Gungeon. But that's also why I picked November for 40k stuff because I, I just... There's a dearth of content on the YouTube side and again from the Inside Baseball Gungeon episode I alluded to earlier. I want more stuff by YouTube for YouTube. So in other words, not coming over from stream because I'm killing some of my own viewership by bringing that over because if you watched it live you're much less likely in my opinion to want to watch it again on YouTube. So I am looking, I am open to suggestions as well, but that's why I'm doing the test run of 40k stuff in November. It's a, it's a month of a dearth of things I want to record during the recording day. But that, on the plus side, if you like Isaac, there's a crap ton more Isaac coming because I've been recording a lot of it, getting through a lot of stuff in it. But yeah, if you want to give some suggestions on things I might consider, go ahead. Basically, because this is the nice thing about being in the kind of indie game scene, something like A Hat in Time, something like Inside, something like Hollow Knight, it might just come along and be amazing and just come out of nowhere. That makes it bad to plan for because I had no plans of, well, on a whim I decided to be like, hey, I'll play A Hat in Time on stream. And then it was awesome. And then I wanted to play more and more and more and then finished it. Can't plan ahead for that beyond just trying something. But it does mean that something from the indie community might just come along and be awesome in November. It's it's hard to say because dozens of indie games come out every day. But we might find a really good one and then that would fill the gap. Especially if the 40k stuff doesn't land well. Although I do ask, give it a chance. You might be a little overwhelmed by it at first if you're not familiar with how Warhammer plays at all. But you might get into it. It might get your its claws into you. Anyway, the last point I had to talk about was that on the subject of South Park, it seems like my Elgato is fine, so I don't know if it was my old PC or something about the the setup in the old house that was causing it to crash. It might also specifically be a problem with the Wii U, but my PS4 streaming via the Elgato straight to OBS, which is also much easier incidentally for switching from a console game to a PC game right after, it's worked fine. It hasn't crashed once, my internet's been crapped out a couple of times. But the Elgato seems totally fine. So that probably might mean that if I was to go back to Twilight Princess, it'd be okay. Unless, again, it was a specific problem with the Wii U. But the issue there is I don't really have much room to set up a Wii U here. But, like, the corner you're seeing here, that's the TV screen I use for console games. And then I've got the two PC monitors here. So, And the PS4 is sitting on a box beneath this table here with all my paints on it for 40k. I've ran out of space in my little tri-corner desk to also set up the Wii U. And I... I, I, I think about it and I'm like, Twilight Princess would be the last thing I play on my Wii U. They're not making games for it anymore. I'm not interested in any games on it. Is it worth setting up the console to play through that and then never touch it again? And I reached the conclusion, I think, that it's not worth the effort. 
I, I love that I have the PS4 set up. That's prepared for Monster Hunter World. But I don't think I really want to go back to Twilight Princess. Now, if I get desperate enough for new content on the stream side, because I can't do Twilight Princess on YouTube, then maybe. But all these barriers are, are getting in the way of it being a good idea, in my opinion. So that's why I haven't. Anyway, I've yammered on for over 20 minutes. So I think we're going to call that there. Thank you very much for your support, whether it be via a Twitch subscription, Twitch Prime, Patreon, uh, just, just letting ads play, all that stuff. It really helps. As I say, it's it's fair to say that October and maybe going forward into November or going backwards to September, things have been getting a lot quieter on the stream side for sure and YouTube a little bit. Not sure what I can do to counter that. I will obviously try my best to find a way. I, this is kind of me banking on 40k stuff as well. But thank you if you go above and beyond to support the channel, especially right now with the run-up to Christmas. I apologise for any delays or stops to streams as a result of my internet it's it's really out of my hands unfortunately as far as that goes i will try as the closer we get to christmas to do what people ask for and this is referencing the gungeon episode again longer streams etc for the christmas periods to give people who don't necessarily like that time of year something else to concentrate on happy to oblige i will try so thank you again to everybody who goes above and beyond for support and i will see you next month for another channel update until then that's all for now.